So what are some of the science fiction things that are really great warnings to us? So any young girl who watches that thinks, well, that can be me. Yeah, look, popular culture is really embracing what I think is a futurist world, or what should be today's world. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and you know, I was just watching a show recently, and so everyone in that show, all the lead characters were women. So of course, there's Olivia Coleman, and she plays one of the detectives, and David Tennant's a great guy, so he was in there. But then, when they go to the court case, the, the judge is a woman, and she's an Indian woman in Scotland. And so I'm sitting there on the couch going, oh my God, it's, it's representation of myself. I've never seen this growing up. Um, wow, and, this sounds amazing. So, And what's the name of uh, it? Broadchurch. Broadchurch, okay, yes, great. Yes, and then the defence lawyer, the prosecutor, they're all women. And it was just such a girl power moment. I mean, you know, as, as a girl, you know, growing up primary school, high school, you don't see that. You don't see that on TV. You don't see that in corporate Australia. And then you see that on a phenomenal show like Broadchurch with Olivia Coleman. It's just very powerful. And it goes a long way into normalizing that. So any young girl who watches that thinks, well, that can be me. Because seeing is believing and seeing is a powerful mechanism for being a, for, for other people being able to see that as, as almost a window to their own future. The one is I like is called Groundhog Day. I did a podcast on it and it's about Bill Murray, for those of you who know who he is, a pretty famous actor. And he's stuck in a time where he has to live the same day over and over and over again. And then finally he gets out of it. But the way he gets out of it is by just finally accepting that this is my life, this is what I need to do. And he lives it really well. He's not trying to manipulate anyone. He's not trying to control anyone. And I think if we can do that and say, okay, this is my life and I can live it well, then we end up having a good life. My second favorite movie, it's an older one with Meryl Streep and it's called Defending Your Life. It's about people dying and they have to go to this place where they review their life. It's about fear. And they look at their lives and in order to move on, they have to look and see where they fearless in this life. And fear comes from attachment, the thing we talked about earlier, when we're attached to something, like I can't lose my kids, I can't lose this job, I can't lose my health. And then we're fearful. When we flow with life, then we can go forward in life. And I think there's a lot of wisdom in both those movies. We're here to learn, we're here to grow, and I feel life is that. It's a school. It's a school to learn. So why not, in this life, learn to live well? You know, Ex Machine is one of the most frightening science fiction films I've seen about AI yeah. and AI becoming a toxic thing. We had these precursors from the Terminator series mm -hmm. about the idea of actually coming back to fix the past where we actually allowed machines to think for themselves. Yeah. Now, once we allow the machine algorithms to work, to that level. Now we've still got a long way to go with the science, to be frankly honest with you. Mm. Um, but once we've got to that point and the machine's are making autonomous decisions yeah. and then it develops a consciousness, mm. we're obsolescent. Mm. We don't need to be here. Mm. So they'll look and say, well, what do we need a human for? And that runs you into Terminator. Oh yeah, when we're playing around with the idea of AI, it's the idea about who's in control here. Mm -hmm. is, it ser is it a servant or is it a system? Mm -hmm. You know, even the Star Wars um, uh, series about uh, where the robots are coming in and assisting and taking over those functions, mm. it's a warning for us. And I think some of the great science thinkers that we've actually had uh, for us um, to say that beware of um, AI, what it's actually capable of doing. Is this in fact actually a, um, a virus or a, a pathogen that we're creating that will infect the world and marginalise us as humans?